Well, thank everyone so much for coming out. It is so incredible to see all of the support for Cuba. We are all out here today because in three days on June 23rd, the United, no the United Nations will be voting on a resolution to end the U.S. blockade of Cuba. And of course, we support that. Since, yeah, yeah. Since 1992, there have been 28 resolutions to end the blockade, and they have all passed with overwhelming majority. But the United States government refuses to cooperate. There have also been, we should talk about Biden as well. Biden has refused to end all of the measures that were put forward by the Trump administration against Cuba and its people. So we are here demanding that the U.S. finally put an end to this illegal and criminal blockade and that they pay attention to the wishes of the international community. So the first speaker is Nesbitt Crutchfield. <laughs> He is the National Coordinating Committee of the Venceremos Brigade and the Saving Lives Campaign. Six and nine or seven different cities are having car caravans protesting uh, the blockade against Cuba by the United States government. Uh, earlier this year, the Board of Supervisors of the San Francisco area uh, voted through the nomination of Supervisor Hillary Ronan and the Chair of the Board of Supervisors, uh, Supervisor Walton, and also to, uh, Supervisor Peskin, those were the three supervisors who carried a unanimous vote to uh, encourage medical collaboration between Cuba and the United States. And that is very important because that was the first major city in the United States to pass such uh, a resolution. So you should be proud of that. It's important for us to stand here and to uh, work to try to get the United States to lift this blockade. Viva Cuba, venceremos. So our final speaker will be Nick Hardy. He is with the Cuba and Venezuela Solidarity Committee. What do we want? End the blockade. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? End the blockade. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? End the blockade. And when do we want it? Now. Right on. So this week, President Biden stood in front of reporters and news cameras and offered these words of really imperial projection. He said, um, let's get this straight. How would it be if the United States were viewed by the rest of the world as interfering with the elections directly of other countries and everyone knew it? It diminishes the standing of a country that is desperately trying to make sure it maintains its standing as a major world power. Hmm, how would it be? <laughs> well, these days, three days from now, we are going to see for the 29th time at the United Nations General Assembly that essentially the whole world stands with Cuba and that the U.S. is on the wrong side of history and international law by continuing its genocidal blockade. The U.S. hasn't just been interfering with other countries' elections, it's been deliberately causing hardship and scarcity on the people of other countries to try and force those governments under the boot of the U.S. empire. Does the U.S. speak for us when it votes to continue the blockade of Cuba every year? No! No. We're here today to say that there's a growing number of people from within the United States who want the blockade to end. We want all U.S. wars, aggressions, and sanctions across the world to end. So again, what do we want? End the blockade. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? End the blockade. When do we want it? Now. All right, let's get going.